on guys and today I'm going to be back with another top 10 list so this time it's going to be the top 10 countries in Asia right now I have here is Hejaz Hejaz has a decently sized army early on and can ally the Mamluks or the Ottomans early on the Ottomans would be the preferred choice as they're powerful and they can help you push into the Mamluks you can also conquer the smaller states here and expand maybe even form Arabia and it's a good choice early on as you can get powerful allies and you can also expand pretty quickly into weak enemies Get on my list, Timurids. Timurids start off with a great army, one of the strongest in the world, and a force limit of 50, making their force limit one of the highest in the world. If we just look at force limits very quickly, they're second after Ming. The only problem with Timurids is even though they're so strong, they can become very weak as they have a lot of instability through Persian rebels rising up. Look, there's Persian rebels already. So they're very likely to rise up. So the only way to really stop this as Timurids would be to form uh, form the Mughal Empire. As right now, they're Akhani and their government isn't reformed, which leads to certain problems. So early on, you would have to push into North India and form the Mughal Empire. After doing this, you should be one of the strongest nations in the world. Janzhou. Janzhou starts off with a very good position early on, as they have a decently sized army and can invade the Manchu tribes, forming Manchuria. Not only that, but they can ally Korchin early on and maybe even Oirat. All you have to do after doing this is either attack Korea before their allies with Ming or wait for the Ming explosion so you can invade China and reform into Qing. After doing this, as Qing, you should be one of the strongest countries in the world, leaving you to conquer all of China if you have UF's claims on all of it, uniting it under one banner once again. And Japan. Japan starts off as early game with a decently sized army it can build up to and a decent sized army. The only problem with Japan is even though as you can see it has all these vassals, is these vassals can become disloyal and try to invade you or to grant their independence. Which means that if you play carefully, you should be able to conquer your vassals, integrate them, or annex them, and you should be able to unite Japan, later conquering or invading Korea, Anu, and putting yourself up for a great position to her invading China. 6. Jhanpur. Jhanpur starts off as an Indian state and early on has one of the largest armies in the world, similar to a lot of countries on this video. The thing about Jhanpur is early on you can conquer a lot of the smaller states around you and you even have a vassal to expand. Not only that, but if you get lucky, Delhi will be invaded or will be very weak, so you can just invade them, if you build up your army, of course. The problem is, is you have strong neighbors around you, so you have to conquer quickly, and then you should be able to rule over North India, and later all of India. Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya starts off with a great position, as they have two vassals and can expand the army. Later, they can conquer the whole Indo-Chinese peninsula, or push into Indonesia, giving them great strength. Not only that, but they can get good allies, maybe even Ming if you're lucky. Or Malacca. Malacca early on may be weaker than Ayutthaya, its neighbor, but it makes up for it in its ideas later on. If you play through, you should become one of the strongest trading states as Malacca. Not only that, but you can push into Indonesia and start colonizing, giving you a great opportunity. Even though you could do this with Ayutthaya, Malacca has better ideas, so for late game, or for later in the game, 100 or 200 years later, you should be in a great position as at Malacca. Korea. Korea starts off in a great position as they can build up a large army and invade the Manchu tribes. Not only that, but early on they can ally Ming, and as similar to Portugal and Spain, Ming will protect you from all enemies as Ming is the strongest country in Asia, at least early game. And if Ming breaks up or the Ming explosion happens, you can just break your alliance with them and invade them. Vijayanagar. Vijayanagar starts off with a very good position in India, as they already have a vassal there and can conquer the minor states around them. Not only that, but they are the strongest in India, allowing them to build up a large army and push north, conquering all enemies in their way, giving them a great position to form um, either Bharat or Hindustan, two states which Vijayanagar can form with giving them claims over all of India, uniting India under one banner. Number 1. Ming. Ming starts off with a great position early on as they have the largest force limit in the world, the hot largest economy in the world, and can expand to many places. The only problem with Ming is early on they have something called a Celestial Empire, which basically makes it so their min autonomy is 50 in every province, besides for their capital, making it so they can't use all the great Chinese land. But as you progress through the game, you may be able to get rid of this government type, making so Ming can become the strongest country in the world. Not only that, but you can expand into the surrounding areas, expanding Ming's power even more. This is why Ming is the strongest country in the game, as far as in Asia, and maybe even in the world, if you can play it correctly. Anyway, thank you, have a good day.